Hi there, I'm Clueless Mike, and you're watching Modelling for Advantage. So we've got another exciting Warhammer 40k unboxing for you today. Let's see what the Kaiser has sent over. He has sent a Sisters of Battle, or Adeptus Sororitas if you prefer, Combat Patrol. Let's see what's in this, a lovely cardboard parcel of beauty. Okay, let's get the cellophane off of this. So this is one of the Combat Patrol boxes, but one thing to note about this particular box is that the contents of it are actually the contents that were originally released in the Sisters of Battle special release box. So a couple of years ago at Christmas, when they released the Sisters of the Battle range, they did a special box that had the codex in and all of these models. Now, I can't remember how much that was. I think it was something like 130, 140 pounds, uh, maybe a little bit cheaper than that, but it was incredibly good value. This box is 85 pounds, doesn't come with the codex, but is, I think, phenomenal value for what you get inside, certainly compared to normal 40k prices. Um, as always, we've got our little pamphlet showing you how to build stuff. Uh, a thing to note about this box is all of the models are push fit, so they don't come with any options. Various of these kits are available separately and will have options on how to build them. The ones in here will not, so they're all built in a particular way. Although, if I were modelling them myself, I would alter some stuff, get your bits box out, churn them around, so they don't look the same as each other. Um, you can get two of these and easily make the squads uh, a little different. One of my bugbears with some of the more modern models that only go together in a certain way is that you have two squads that look the same, which is not a favourite of mine. Okay, let's get down to the units we have inside here. First of all, we have this little one here, which I am guessing is the Cannoness. Just a single little sprue uh, makes one lady. What is she armed with? She's armed with a sword and a rod. Uh, that's reasonably good in terms of um, modelling um, what you want on her, because the rod can represent three different types of rod. I don't think anyone's going to care if you don't have, if this isn't the exact rod you're supposed to be using, it's a rod. Um, the sword, um, the Sister Battle have access to Blessed Blades, uh, which is a special type of melee weapon. That is one of those. It's a really good weapon. It's probably what you're going to want on her. Other than that, she's a really nice model, really dynamic, uh, cool robes, excellent model. Good to see that in there. Oh, what is this I spy? Oh dear. These, to anyone who is familiar with them, are the new style flying stands that they've been doing for two, three years now, ever since the Primaris line came out of Space Marines. And they are hideous. So, first of all, they're bent plastic. They bow. I mean, that's not snapping. I'm putting a lot of force on. I don't want to do a John. It's not a, a, a battleship. Um, but they're really unstable. But the worst thing about them is if I pull it a bit close to the camera, the little joining spot there, that's how you attach it to the model. It's a little curved dip. And the model, when we get to one, will have a little curved dimple somewhere on it. And you're supposed to glue that to the other one. Now, plastic glue doesn't really work because this style plastic doesn't melt fully um, with pro proper plastic glue. And super glue doesn't have a strong enough weld for such a tiny little point, a, so a strong enough hold, such a tiny little curved point um, to be able to hold it properly, especially if you paint the models and then glue them on. Really awful design, hate them. Any models that I've had that have come with them, I mount separately on kind of built up bases instead. Big bag of bases in here. There are 27 miniatures in here. Um, so you've got bases for most of them. They include in that 27 miniatures, I suspect, a couple of little cherubs. So little servitor-like uh, servo skull type things, uh, which will be going on these tiny little bases at a guess. What have we next? We have a rhino. So a rhino, I mean, if you buy a rhino separately, I think they're like 35 quid. So you're getting one of those here in this 85 quid box. I mean, you're not going to pay 85 quid for this either. You're going to buy a discount somewhere for maybe 65 or 68 quid. Uh, so really good. Um, this looks very similar to the original Rhino sprue. You can kind of tell the old sprues um, for the amount of space they have on them. So you can see, I mean, a modern sprue would never have this kind of spacing on it. Uh, so that is the Rhino sprue that has been in use for probably decades at this point. There is the second half of the standard Rhino sprue used for Chaos uh, vehicles, Space Marine vehicles, Deptus Sororitas vehicles. Let's see if we can find the extra sprue. Here we go. 
So this brew has all the Sisters of Battle accoutrements for the Rhino. So you have different um, hatches with the nice embossed fleur-de-lis. You've got the up-armoured fronts that look really cool. Uh, things like the um, missile launcher they have that you can stick on. Just a Hunter Keller missile, but it looks awesome. The thing with more or less all Sisters of Battle or Adeptus Sororitas stuff is there is so many embellishments on them. So if you really want a nice painting project, this is the thing to go for. One of the reasons I don't have a full Sisters of the Battle army is I don't want a painting project that will take forever to paint, so I don't have one of these. I mean, you can see here there's a little, there's a little rose. Even kind of like the storm bolters are more embossed than usual. There's all kinds of little um, details that you can glue on, and you don't necessarily just need to put it on your Rhino. You could put it on some of the other figures as well if you wanted, or tart up some other vehicles. Really nice sprue, this one. And you can see the difference on how packed this sprue is compared to the older style sprue. You can see what the CAD design allows them to do now and just the sheer detail on the pieces as well. So really good show of how they have upped their game in the uh, recent years. So that has got all kinds of stuff on there. So that is the Rhino. What else do we have in here? So the I think these are probably mixed sprues. They are. Because they were in the starter set, they have mixed the models on the sprues. So on these two sprues, I'm going to see, are they the exact same sprue? One of the issues they sometimes have is in the... Um, Kind of boxes like that is they repeat the exact same model and if we look here yeah you can see that exactly the same as there exactly the same as there so you're going to have two exactly repeated sprues here so what is on here um in the box there are five seraphim who seraphim who are jump pack sisters of the battle they have these really cool winged kind of like fluid look like organ pipe um jump packs so there are four there there must be another one on the next sprue so it looks like you'll get two of each of the two standard squad members, and then there'll be a unique sergeant on the other one. Uh, also on here, there is an Arco for Gallant. Um, so you're going to have two of the same model there. And it looks like we have the Sisters Repentia on here as well. I suspect there are two of them on this sprue. I can't see the second one at this point, uh, but you can see one here, the giant chain swords. Um, so they're all really useful units, to be honest. Arco for Gallant really cheap and put out an absolute ton of attacks. Really useful in the modern edition. They're quite strong. They get re-rolls to hit. Sisters of the Battle, you may think of them as kind of like um, humans in a world of space marines, but actually they're super killy combat um, machines in general. The Arco for Gallants put out tons of um, attacks, whereas the Eviscerator wielding Repentia they have massive two-handed chainswords which chop Space Marines in half and they get loads of attacks. Uh, so two really good units there. And then the Seraphim, they're dual pistol wielding jump pack people. Um, now this kit, I believe, comes with bolt pistols on all of the models, which is a bit of a shame because you really want them to have double melter pistols or double flamer pistols on at least some of them. But again, that could easily be fixed with the application of a scalpel and your bits box. Um, I'm not sure, there seems to be quite a few heads on the sprue, so it's possible they're giving you a variety of heads, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case, so you could differentiate the two models slightly by having a different head on them. Okay, so that's what we've got there. Then the last sprue in here, again, another absolutely packed sprue. This one appears to have on it this lady here, who is a sister superior Sister Repentia Superior. So she's a lady who wanders around with a whip um, and basically tells the Sisters Repentia what to do. She gives them all kinds of buffs in game and is really important to have with them. Uh, Sisters Repentia used to be one of the premier assault units in the whole game. Um, with the new codex, they've come down a little bit as often is the case. They brought out some different models that they want you to buy, so they've made them better in close combat, but they're still a pretty usable unit. Uh, there's also somewhere hidden on these sprues, it's hard to tell where, but there are 10 Battle Sisters as well. Um, I'm not sure exactly where. I think some may have been on the other sprues. There's obviously some there. They come with fixed weapons. I think they have a Flamer and a Multi-Melter. Let's see if we can find their second weapon. Um, doo -doo -doo, there's a Flamer. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a look at the box art and see. Let's see if we can see it on here instead. Ah oh, no, they have a flamer and they have a storm bolter. Uh, Sisters of Battle storm bolters aren't like normal storm bolters. They have I think they're called uh, artificer or blessed storm bolters. They're basically a storm bolter that does two damage. Um, so 
Really good weapon, excellent for killing Space Marines. So they're the two special weapons you get in the 10 Man Sisters box. Again, you could easily take your scalpel to them and swap over the special weapons that you get. Uh, they also get a standard, I think they call it a Reliquy or... Mm, I'm not exactly certain what they call it, maybe not a Reliquy, um, but it's a standard they can take in the unit, gives them extra abilities. Lastly on this sprue, we have the awesome Penitent Engine, uh, which is the kind of like Dreadnought-like thing uh, that has a convict wired into the front of it, and it's a bloodthirsty, murderous killing machine. They're really good in game, they get to advance and charge, they've got feel no pain, they put out loads of decent attacks. Again, these come up with fixed weapon options. I believe this one comes with two flamers and uh, two big um, buzzsaw blades. They're actually a pretty good option. The flamers are reasonably good because they don't have huge ballistic skill, so nothing wrong with that as a kit. And again, separately, I reckon that model probably runs at 20, 30 quid uh, to buy the full kit. Uh, could be wrong there adds to the value of this box, really is good. I mean, let's take it, 85 pound from Games Workshop. If we add a Rhino, that's 30, 35. A Penitent Engine, that's 20. Uh, Battle Sister Squad, that's gonna be at least 25. The Seraphim, they're gonna be at least 20. The Cannoness separately, she's gonna be 15 quid. Um, you've got the Sisters Repentia, that's probably another 20 quid. There's loads of value in this box. And it's also a really good army. If you're looking for a good meta choice of an army, Sisters of Battle are right up there at the moment. They are a really interesting codex to play. They've got lots of unique rules. Uh, their main special rule that they go on is they get things called miracle dice. So you get to roll dice at certain points for doing certain things and you see what the result is and you set that dice aside and then at some future point in the game you can substitute that result for a different result. So say you really want to make a charge, you can take one of your miracle dice that's rolled a six, substitute it in on your charge roll to get more distance. Say you've hit with your multi-melter and want to do loads of damage, substitute in a five you've rolled for their damage. Really interesting, really makes it a reliable army. Um, quite a finesse army because the models themselves are quite weak and flimsy, uh, but they've all got invulnerable saves, they've got piles of special rules as all armies have nowadays but this is a lovely set of models really good value and if you're starting a sister of the battle army i think this is an excellent place to start whether you want to buy two of these that's debatable because the models are all single pose and you may not want that if you're happy doing a bit of modeling to cut them up change them around that's very easy to do um, especially if you're buying some of the other kits to get some more parts you could interchange then that would be well worth it but if i was like a sister of the battle army this is exactly where i would start really good value really good models all round great show if all combat patrols were of this good value then well they're all pretty good value but this one especially is excellent value Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description. But a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.